So cotillion is this whole like learning process about manners and dresses and I don't know, cute 19 year old boys. And the dance itself is your debut. Cotillions show you the etiquette skills, the social essentials and how to function in society. Whether it be introducing yourself, how to have a firm handshake, how to make eye contact, how to um, sit properly in a chair, to be able to get some skills that is um, going to be helpful as you mature. It's important to have good manners and to just show that you respect people when you're conversing with them and interacting with them. And I think manners is the, you know, the easiest way to show that respect. The etiquette side of cotillion. Table manners. Something that most of us could probably learn a little bit more about. How to use the fork on the left, what utensil to use, because when you are dining out, you are in public. It's not dining at the kitchen table or sitting watching TV. It is more in a formal situation. What fork to eat with when, um, how to dance, how to properly address someone who's of a higher social rank than you, and um, things like that. Stuff that's actually really interesting to learn. Having social skills in and being able to properly present yourself is very, very essential in today's competitive world. Getting you ready to go look for a job, to be able to meet people who will be very influential in your life. That level of human interaction that we engage in every day, you know, my generation sort of grew up with that, right? Where you dealt with people one-on-one. -on -one. You didn't have technology as a medium in terms of a way to communicate. My mother was the biggest manner stickler in the world, so if we didn't hold our forks correctly and you know, say the requisite pleases and thank yous, we were taken to task. So that was sort of part of how we grew up. I think the importance of whether it's a cotillion or whatever the construct is, is social interaction is just different now. The cotillion process it's sort of a, was sort of a way to learn manners, and then we were debutantes our first year of college, so when we were 18. I've had the opportunity to work with debutantes, and that is when the family would invite me in to their location as a rehearsal, getting ready for the grand cotillion ball. Being a debutante is where your parents kind of present you to society as a whole, like especially the men of your age group. So you have an escort and um, you have to get a dress and you have to get gloves. All hundred girls had to stand in a receiving line and shake the hand of everybody coming in. There's a special curtsy you have to do when you're presented and you have to write this like little blurb about yourself and what you hope to be doing in 10 years. All these flowers come to your house and um, you sort of put them on display all over. But the bottom line is boxes, like 40 or 50 or 60 boxes of flowers. But at one point my dad walked in and he said, he looked around, I don't think he realized how this was all gonna play it, and he said, I could pay for college with what's gonna be dead in this room by tomorrow. If I were to hear about this in some other culture, I would think it was absolutely bizarre. Um, but since I've been around it all my life, it seems fairly normal. I don't think I ever had any choice about being a debutante. Both my grandfathers were very insistent on it. It was my decision. Um, I think my mother really didn't care one way because she had refused to do it, so she didn't really care. And then my grandmother, um, both my grandmothers were happy I was doing it. It was much less in those days about money and much more about you know, who your parents were and who your grandparents were and um, a sort of traditional class structure. I know certain clubs you have to do an application process. At mine you don't because my grandfather has legacy. So I don't have to because my last name is Thomas and we have a crest on the wall. <laughs> but people made assumptions about who you were and how you behaved and if you were snobby or not and that sort of thing. There are a lot of sort of pejorative connotations, I think. It's, it's like, um, Kind of a cattle show like they parade you around 
like, oh, my granddaughter's of acceptable age for marriage, go for it. I think for some people it just seems really frivolous. I mean, it is unnecessary. In my era, there were many of us rebelling against it and trying to wheedle our way out. It seemed like a very strange set of values that we were not really subscribing to. My take on it is basically that it was a blessing for me. It helped me be really who I needed to become, which was the exact opposite. It really kind of launched my social life. But in terms of, of serving that purpose of, you know, well now you're, you know boys, you're, you're, you know, you know people, you're kind of out and you'll have a social life. I think that purpose is long over with. It used to be a lot more about marriage and now it's more about a coming of age thing. I do think it's, it's sort of a social statement now. It's just, it's, it's, I think it's antiquated. I don't, I don't think it says much about anything. And it certainly is a waste of time and money. There's a lot more in this world you could do to celebrate young people. And it's a very old tradition that really doesn't mean a lot anymore. One firm shake and say your first and last name. Very important. Now I have a question for you. Have you ever danced with um, in a closed dance position? Not. Let me give you a clue. You're the leader. You have a left hand, left hand up, please. This is where my hand goes, so we're going to be in a closed class position. This is the key. What would you think that hand would do? Oh, good. Go where? Oh, good. The whole idea. As I said, everybody goes here. Hi, if you hold on to the wing of my back, you lift your elbow up. I have a shelf. Now, is me looking good here? Bridge for a turn. Voila. Social style, close position dancing. You did great. Thank you very much. Thank you.